discussion? Additions, deletions, other criticisms. <laughs> Things you want to tell Zeke that you don't like about him. <laughs> <laughs> you put on a sport coat, but you got to take those glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Comments and correspondence. Is there anyone in our audience who would like to make a comment about a non-agenda item? Good evening, Virginia. <laughs> no comments. Correspondence. I guess we have a few items. Uh, the first of which is a thank you note sent from SBAA for our uh, support of the short term festival card enclosed in your packets. Second item being a letter of thank you uh, for the gift sent memory of the coverings to our organization's uh, partners in Compassion. That's up at SCANNED. The other one, if any of you enterprising individuals would care to do service for the Walker administration, I've included the latest DOA newsletter, uh, which lists out the various councils, um, commissions and, and other uh, boards that uh, citizens are requested to submit their names and nomination to serve on, along with the, um, as you all are aware, the shortage of propane, the um, state of emergency that was declared and the resources that were allocated for that. That's included in that letter also. That is it on a written correspondence. Thank you. Anybody have anything else from any of the committees that want to? Item number one, new business. Consider a motion to adopt resolution 282-031814 supporting SB 566-911 center funding. See? Okay. So essentially, I uh, got a call from our county administrator asking us to take a look at this. Uh, basically, there's a bill coming to the Senate that will change um, the way 911 centers are currently funded. Uh, right now, that is uh, fund, or the fu primary funding source for that is a tax placed on landlines. Uh, as you all know, technology has changed over the years, and as a consequence, we now are very cell phone dependent as opposed to landline dependent. And so, funding has essentially dwindled from landlines while use of cell phones has proliferated. So, one of the things that this will do is to uh, get rid of the single. Uh, Fee, sorry, I said tax over the fee on landlines and replace that with a universal fee on all lines of service, so cell phones or whatever. Uh, the other thing this will do is direct funding into one single 911 center per county. And uh, for rural counties, this is sort of standard operating procedure. And so we're being asked to support this. Uh, this has been through our fire board there in support of it. Um, all around, I think it's a very good measure for us to get behind. I would keep. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. I was going to say essentially it keeps things static uh, here in Door County, for better or worse. I can add a couple little tidbits to it. Uh, this was also passed by the county board last month, uh, by another number of other municipalities, uh, also throughout the state. So what happened with the, in case of Door County, and this directly affects everyone's taxes, is last year for the first time, uh, AT and T runs the landlines for. Um, the 911 center, and we were sent the bill of about twenty thousand dollars that we'd never received before, and that was because of the lack of funding coming from the fees charged to landline telephones. And in the past, that had been enough to cover the cost of the 911 center. It no longer is enough to cover, so we now have to pay because everybody's getting rid of landlines. So the idea behind this bill, is, as Zeke had mentioned, was to let all users of the communication device have to pay the fee. Uh, to fund the 911. Where the uh, <coughs> opposition coming to this bill is there are a number of your large cities, Milwaukee, a couple other places, that operate their own municipal 911 centers rather than a county wide 911 center. And so they're putting up some, um, trying to put some restrictions in front of it. The vast majority <coughs> of the counties in Wisconsin have one call center in the mm -hmm. county, much like Door County does. And with today's technology, if you thought about it, you could run your 911 center in Door County from Atlanta, mm -hmm. literally. And there are some places in the country that do that. They operate 911 centers in a different state than where their, their town, village, or city is. Interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and very effectively. Mm -hmm. right. So that's additional background. The, the only question I have is I understand the, the need for it, 
but I don't see anything in our resolution or anything about what the fee is going to be. I think it said 40 cents for the landline. What is the fee going to be for a cell phone? I don't know if that's been established. I don't think it's been established. Yeah. You know, so you're you're asking us to authorize something, but we have no idea what what they're going to put a number or what number they're going to put on it. You know, I mean, because I mean, if they suddenly say, "Well, it's a three dollar charge to a cell phone bill," it, John, I guess what I can tell you is, in, in I don't know in Minnesota how they do things, but this is pretty common practice across the country now is that cell phones are uh, being taxed in this manner. Um, and it, in my mind anyway, should be based on a, a current account basis. In other words, what they were receiving previously, that's what they will probably base it off of moving forward. Uh, but as Dave mentioned, the gap in funding, uh, that, that ends up falling back on local taxpayers as opposed to ratepayers. And since 1996, all cell phones are required to have GPS location and also 911 dialing capabilities. And so Wisconsin is very much behind the eight ball. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, have, I have no problem with, sure. with doing it. I'm just want, I'm just saying there's no fees. I mean, they listed what the landline and was, but we just kind of left it open ended sure. what we want to charge. And it, it will be adjusted with time as well. So as population grows, conceivably the fee will also grow. And, and I, to be honest with you, I don't remember if in, I read most of the bill, mm -hmm. I don't recall if there was a, a number in there or not. I know they talked about so. escalating the f due for cost of living. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that there was actually a fee. There wasn't. I, I, I read the bill okay. that was on there in the meeting packet, and I saw the landline, 40 cents. But it says, okay, how much are they charging on a cell phone? It makes sense. I understand where they're going. But, you know, if you put your cell phone, there's already 10 different taxes on it, you know, that are listed right. as additional type thing. Is this another one that's just open-ended? And you know. It is. And conceivably, the legislature will be responsible for this. In perpetuity, so we'll have to hold their feet to the fire if, uh, if they proceed to make the tax um, too burdensome. You can call them personally, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> tell, you. tell them you don't like it. I'll tell you. them I refuse to use my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn my cell phone and get a line in my <laughs> That's what I do. He's got one. Just got one. Comment on this. If you think about it, right, and my daughter's now done this twice since I've been up here in Dual County where she's gotten on the 911 button. We had a gentleman somewhere down around Sturgeon Bay not too long ago who got lost uh, out on the ice. Is this running a bell with anyone? Yeah, and they essentially it happens had all to. Time. Yeah, well, he he had to call and then hang up, move a little bit, call back, hang up, move a little bit, call, <laughs> hang up, move a little bit, and so they could plot a course. And by plotting a course, they could figure out where he was. You know, were able to rescue the guy. So if you're out in Peninsula State Park or somewhere and you happen to fall down and break your leg or something, you know, cell phone gets you 911 access. So again, not a, not a bad thing. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 281-021114, creating, oh, that's the wrong one. I was just going to start. Right, I'm a step ahead of you. You can go ahead with that. Uh, resolution 282-031814 in support of Senate Bill 566. I'll second it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number two, consider a motion to approve resolution adopting a local preference purchasing policy. Okay, so coming through uh, the Finance Committee, the recommendation from the Finance Committee was that we need to provide some, some preference to local vendors. And of course that enhances the local economy whenever those funds are circulated through the local economy. The question is how much is too much? You know, at what point does it become gouging? And so we set a number with this. And that number is 10%. So if a local vendor is charging 10% or less for an item, then what we could find a comparable cost item for a basis somewhere else, we would give the preference to the local vendor. If the local vendor is over 10% more than what we could find at somewhere else on a national basis, we would have to purchase it from the lowest cost uh, provider. And that's essentially what this policy does is compels us to take a look at how we're purchasing things and trying to be good stewards of the taxpayer money. Give the locals a chance. That's it. It gives them a chance, but also says, hey, 
we, we have a, a parameter for that. Mm -hmm. I'm all favor of it, but looking at, I think it's page 17 of our uh, agenda or our, our, on our electronic device. If you go down to paragraph A, and there are the second paragraph A, it says local vendors' bid price will be reduced by 10% and comparing to others? Correct. That's uh, very misleading because if you read that paragraph, you say, okay, I got a bid and I'm going to take a local vendor and reduce it by 10%, but it never says in there that we're actually going to pay them the 10% the more. Okay. okay I guess thing. for clarification reasons, it's when we're doing the calculation to find if a local vendor were to be awarded, we reduce their bid by 10% and then compare that number with the national right. number. Right, but, but yeah. somewhere in there you have to say that I'm not given, I'm not paying, I'm not giving the local vendor 10% less in money. You're giving them what his bid is. That's right. Which is up to 10% more right. than the competitive bid. But the way the paragraph is written, it sounds like you're just reducing his 10% hey, I toward guess that I, bid. When I put in there, when comparing to other bids, that was simply what that is, is just for the comparison purpose uh, and, and what I'd intend to do. You know, it's get there. Do, you have, do you have a different way of saying it, John? Well, I, I would say somewhere I'd clarify it in there that, that for, com for comparison, we will reduce our bid by 10% to see if they're within that local vendor guidelines. Okay. And if they are, that contract will be awarded at their bid price. Okay. Okay, I don't want to have it yeah, misleading where the guy thinks that, well, geez, you took my bid and you just knocked it down 10% because I'm a local vendor. That, okay. That's what you, and you said you gave it to me, but you knocked 10% off. Right. And they, again, they get the contract with the 10% on there, but I don't know Right, but I, I just saying spe spell it out. If you're yes, sir. Writing, a, writing a rule, take the ambiguity out of it. Yes, sir. John, any specific language to use there? What did I just say? At the bid price? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, vendor will receive. For comparison uh, purposes, it's it's reduced 10%. If okay. they're awarded the bid, the bid will be let at their bid price. Okay. You know, or just just so they know that right, they're the not. bid price has submitted. Yeah, as submitted. As, yeah, as the as bid submitted. price has submitted. Okay. We're giving them the favorability of a 10%. Julia. I didn't think of this before, but it's going to make a difference whether you're thinking of that we're willing to pay up to 10% more than a national vendor, or whether we're going to take 10% off yes, of the, the local calculation. price. It will be a fraction Which way difference. do you want to calculate? Yeah. You know? I thought I I thought originally that we were going to say we would pay up to 10% more than the Correct. than the lowest bidder. Yeah. I don't think we're we'll close. It'll be. Yeah, we'll give it to the local. Yeah, it's like yeah. when we yeah. so whichever way you calculate, it's in that. Let me let me try an example. Okay. Make sure I'm not confused. A non-local vendor comes in at ninety-five dollars. A local vendor comes in at one hundred and two. We would take ten percent off the price of the one hundred and two from the local vendor, and he would be at ninety-two. He would be awarded the bid, right. but he would be paid the hundred and two. That's correct. exactly correct. correct. But that's yes. not what this says. And that, and Ask Dave. Should we put that in there? <laughs> <laughs> and call him by a landline too. <laughs> Go visit the uh, soap shop cleverly disguised as a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> <For> clarification. <laughs> uh, Donna. If there, what's going to be considered local if there's more than one? What's what's local? I mean, well, it has to be within the village. Ver verify the address versus... in the village of Sister Bay. Yeah. Okay. Should, we, we, should we, we say local as Door County, though, versus the Sister Bay? Because you may have a lot of contractors. Uh, for instance, I built my house with well, all local labor. Uh, but a lot of that came out of Sturgeon Bay. I mean, Lampers was out of Sturgeon Bay. Albrecht's was out of whatever. But that's all local in Door County. But it wasn't in Sister Bay, only because Sister Bay did not have a lumber, you know, Sure. Here, but I mean, one of the, they didn't have one of the issues that comes into play here is that anything that's a public construction contract and it's going to exceed twenty-five thousand dollars, 
this yes. policy completely gets kicked out anyway because yeah. of state law, and that's what I've got written in here. Mm -hmm. um, it, also, if you start looking at things like equipment, you know, things of that nature, some of the specialized equipment that we purchase, like a track list, that's not going to be something that comes out of Door County. But could you could you say maybe the village Door County village first, village. and it could be a hierarchy, and then well, if it, there isn't any and village, most of this it seems County. to me like it's going to be pretty much local around here. What if we said Sister Bay Liberty Grove? Okay. I mean, there's a lot of the contractors that we would yeah, use yeah. that are in Liberty right Grove. Here. Uh -oh. So may I have a clarification of local buying practices from what I understood what we were talking about was basically giving our taxpayers mm. an advantage. Why should we go outside of our tax base? That, no, that's oh, just a village. question. You mean the village tax base? Exactly. It is where we the locate inside the village. Correct. Yeah. So, outside of the village, I mean, my assumption is outside of the village, <coughs> it's fair and competitive. If you can keep your prices fair and competitive, then sure we'll use you. But if you can't meet our, then we have to do what's best for our pocketbook. I can say for somebody who maybe is supplying office goods that would want to make it go of it, and they want to take us on as a customer locating inside the village of Sister Bay at somewhere, say, like Country Walk Shops, all of a sudden, maybe that 10% is the yeah. difference between them locating outside or inside, uh, to your to, point. Yeah. To his point, though, I mean, let's put it in perspective. We we do a lot of work with Action Electric, okay? Action Electric is in Liberty Grove, it's not in Sister Bay, mm -hmm. okay? I would consider him a local vendor, okay? And he spends his tax dollars, even though he lives in, in Liberty Grove, he spends all of his tax dollars going to the Piggly Wiggly and our Nordor Clinic and and all of our services within Sister Bay, but you know, but he is actually, uh, you know, to, according to your definition, he's not a taxpayer in the village of Sister Bay. So, I I think I would prefer to say that it it's local at Sister Bay first and then Door County. And then after that, you're you know because there's more outside of Liberty Grove too. If you're if you're yeah. in so Fish you Creek or whatever, yeah. Right. Right. So just say Door County is is Sister Bay slash Door County. Then it's with weighted to Sister Bay first. What do we want to tier it? If there is a if it's Sister Bay, we're going to go one percent. If it's Door County, we're going to go another percent. No, just keep it flat. No. Yeah, I think local play yeah, in, in my yeah. mind is is within Door County, but I would still I prefer if I had two bids and one was from Fish Creek and the other one was from Sister Bay, I would right. I, I would nod Sister. to Sister Bay as the oh, number so. one you know the seed, but then the right and the other one. Okay, to your point. So <coughs> you still end up with the ten percent yes. factor. So if you had two local contractors or two local suppliers and they were competing for the same piece of business if one came in at 101 and one came at 99 the 10% difference is still going to give it to them yeah it's going to give it to them and you just pick okay. there which one's closest to Sister Bay or, or well, they're going to be inside of that but now do I go and select the Fish Creek vendor over a two dollar difference to Dave's point okay. yeah right Main Street versus Piggly Yeah, you know, even though they fell inside that 10% guideline, one of them is lower than the other one. So do I pick the one who's slightly lower that's further away, or do I pick the one that's Sister slightly Bay more close? still say that's, Sister, that's one Sister Bay first. Okay. Okay, and then then Door County. <coughs> okay, so if, if you had a bid, and you had two bids from within Door County, uh -huh. and one of them was from Sister Bay, okay. Sister Bay gets the weighting. Okay, as the the bid. If if Sister Bay is way out of it and Fish Creek is uh, the next lowest, and then the next one's in Green Bay, Fish Creek gets it. You know, or Door County. I I guess if this is going to be a staff policy, why murky the waters? Because if you want people to abide by this, for them to go back and have to look through a PowerPoint presentation on how they should buy and where they should buy from, <laughs> isn't going to be practical. Um, the purpose of this is, from what I understood when we were discussing it originally, was to give preferential treatment to our taxpayers. And then outside of that, it's really to protect our local businesses because who can compete with online right now? Nobody. At the present moment, there's nobody here within our village that can compete, so it's giving them that leg up because you know you can go online to Office Max and get cheaper than... 
here. So we're giving that 10% saying, we really want to support you guys, right. but you got to give some so right. we can get. And I think if you start mucking the waters where you're going, okay, from 10 miles, you get an 8%, you know, it just, it's going to be hard to make that division. So I think there just has to be a clear cut line. I don't think we can say, well, if, if it's outside of Sister Bay, we can find it cheaper online. Do it because it's also about the bottom line too because it, it does affect our taxpayers so i think all around we're watching for our taxpayers just my opinion so how about if we use it as written for quote sister bay businesses sister bay taxpayers see how it goes and if if we run into instances where it would make a difference to somebody versus fish creek versus green bay and there wasn't somebody within the sister bay that could that they could do it then we revisit if we need to Look at making a change. And this is our first step at trying to do some type of local preference. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the local preference. I just think you're really limiting yourself. I mean, you, you, and we may got, be. You got a plumber. You don't have an electrician. Uh, you, uh, I mean, you have very few people that fall within that sister bay as a business that could uh, fall and, into it. And to those points, what you're talking about with plumbers and electricians, right? Most of them, I would imagine, that we're going to get bids on for small jobs that sure. aren't going to be in that public construction guideline. Sure. Right. We have a lot of money we spend with action election for $8,000, right. $7,000, $5,000. Right. But it's action election. If you write it to the point, you know, Sister Bay only, he's right. precluded. He's, well, he's out of it. I guess what I'm getting at is that he's... No, he wouldn't, no, be, he wouldn't be precluded. Case. Yeah. If there was right. nobody else in Sister Bay to bid against him for that amount. Right. Yeah. Then he's, he's bidding he's with everybody it. else. Yeah. Again, yeah. seeing as how we're on... Peninsula, it's di uh, just from the last couple of projects we've gone through, it's hard enough just to find folks to bid on those things. Okay, expl explain to me how he's included if you said you left it to Sister Bay. He wouldn't be included in the 10%. How would he be? Because he, he, he wouldn't lose the job. He wouldn't lose the job. He wouldn't lose the job, no. But he wouldn't, wouldn't get the favorability of the 10%. There wouldn't be anybody competing with him. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's nobody fighting with him. But he Madison doesn't get that 10%. Because the people that are going to bid against him are going to be out of Sturgeon Bay South. Yeah, and so, Green Bay. And yeah, conceivably, if he's coming up to do the job and it's not going to be a, a $25,000 threshold job, then his proximity to us should more than compensate for his mobilization costs. Green Bay or the Sturgeon do. Bay people may not want to come up here. No. They may not, but they do. They bid a lot more than, <laughs> than our locals do. Yeah. And just continue. And, and I mean, not, it's not an exception. It's continually they bid a lot lower than our locals do. I'll so if we're trying to get a local favor, then how do you what, how do you What we just in? came across was a bid for insulation. Okay. Okay. The local bidder uh, came up with two and a half inches of insulation. The Green Bay bidder came up with three inches of insulation. Okay, so now we're talking about the oranges. The price difference between them for two and a half inches or three inches were really close. But if the next guy went to a three inch insulation package, his bid went up $10,000, the local gentleman. And we massaged that out every way we could massage it out. Can't do it. He just couldn't get there yeah. on a comparable product to compare apples to apples. Yeah. And, and I, I think a lot of times you're not going to get there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to find that that's just the way it is. But if the intent of the law is to try to get some, you know, favor to our taxpayer base and our local businesses, as well as to your point, trying to get them to, to pony up and say, hey, you know, be within, you know, right. be realistic. If you can buy it online for a heck of a lot cheaper, and and make the money and stay there, I think you have to keep it outside of just the city limits or village limits of Sister Bay. I think it has to be local defined Fair <coughs> County. You know, or at least Liberty Grove. I mean, you're, I mean we, we have so few businesses within our village that, are, that we're doing it. You know, again, I built a house and it's all Door County, but it's, right. but it was well, a lot of it was not here. Some of it was. I can tell you to Shane's point, and this is one that may come into play here in the, the not-too-distant future, uh, since we've discussed how we're going to be handling our um, landscaping, there is a local company who would like to submit a bid for flowers. There are other Door County communities, or other Door County companies who also are going to be tapped for that. 
So if we expanded to Door County, our local taxpayer, to Shane's point, would not benefit substantially, even though he pays taxes inside the village. Maybe the guy down the road all of a sudden is on equal par with him. And so it's really a question of who do we, who do we want to support inside Sister Bay, the actual taxpayers of Sister Bay, or to your point, the broader base of Door County. They both are admirable objectives. Well, that's why I said Sister Bay first, and then Door County, and then it doesn't apply. Well, if you're going to do that, oh, I think back to what you said earlier, Z, about having a, <coughs> a two-tier percentage. You could do it that way. Because if you're going to say first Sister Bay and then Door County, what if they're both the same? Uh, what if their bids are both the same? Which one has right. a, you Which know, one or, or, or what if or what if the Fish Creek one is just two dollars lower? But right, yeah. and, and this goes to the by local initiative, the you know, uh, Dual County Economic Development Corporation is working on, and. It, what do we consider local? And in Door County, at least my experience has been it's been Door County, but this is a public policy that you all are implementing, which means you're vanguards of the taxpayers' money. If you were to do a percentage based on you know that hierarchical ten percent in the village, and then what would you do for Door County, non-village Door County? Five percent. See, I, 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 I agree with what Shane said. I don't want to see a two-tier. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can write it in the code very easily: Sister Bay first, and then Door County, and then it doesn't apply. Period. I mean, if it's, you know, if you have a waiting, and I have a person in Sister Bay, and that ten percent gives them the lowest, you know, bid, they get the bid. And if the guy's in Fish Creek and he's two dollars more. The ten percent puts him down underneath it in Sister Bay. And if he's two dollars less, if he's two dollars less, he in Sister Bay gets the waiting. You know, it's a, it says Sister Bay first. You know, which means that ten percent applies to Sister Bay first, then Door County. So, so how about if you word it? Um, let's see, vendor uh, give a ten percent vendor bid pricing preference for good materials and general services to a Sister Bay slash Door County business, which has been in existence for at least six months, with preference being given to the Sister Bay business. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it is. Uh, the first preference, or... I, I think what we're doing here is because there's a lot of money that is spent on... There's, uh, there's a lot of money that's spent in this village. And if we're giving 10%, we can effectively hurt or move our budget one way or the other by 10% if we give this to all local vendors. And that's why I believe and I feel that our taxpayers should be the ones that benefit and outside of that we can make an educated decision on where we want to go and how we want to do based on proximity, time, faith, I mean experience with work. Because I doubt you would go online and find an electrician in Milwaukee and bring them up here. I'm sure you're going to do the right thing and right. you know find somebody that's close and will be able to service if anything goes wrong. I'm, I just look at it and say, if we're going to pay 10% more for everything just because we want to keep it in Door County, and it's not from our taxpayers, mm -hmm. that can affect our budget extremely. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I see you know, that. And I, I guess I look at it because I was looking at it in that regard. Yeah, and that could happen. Because I, our taxpayers deserve the benefit because it's their money we're using. Our direct taxpayers, but outside of our direct taxpayers, I, I love the buy local. I practice it myself, but when it's not practical, it's not practical. So, I don't know. I guess I think outside of this, it's up to your judgment. I don't think we should impede you on how you want to spend the money outside of Sister Bay. You can't leave it up to his judgment. If you're writing the code, you have to spell it out. And I agree with what you're saying. No, you well, this is not in Sister Bay. You're saying it's exactly. If it's not in, yeah. if the business is not in Sister Bay. Then the it just doesn't apply. Doesn't apply. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not trying, in that exactly. case, we're not trying to do something for quote local in Door County. This is applying, this is a this small is policy intended to assist and help businesses located in Sister Bay. Yes. So, having opened the Pandora's box, I'd like to say that I, I agree with what Shane's saying right now. And if anything, 
is it possible for us to put in that we'd like to revisit this in a year and see how effective it is and you know what's yes. do we have an ability to, trigger? to ask in a technical question do we have an ability to flag payables with some kind of a note that they exercise this policy flag them how for the board to see so so meaning everybody that receives yeah. some kind of an award based on this is there some way we can flag it in the system so a year from now we can get a report that said these four yeah. companies got this you preferential come up treatment. With a code yeah. or something. Okay. You need to because yeah. you needed to your point. You need to know how much did this cost me. Yeah. <clears throat> you know if it's busting the budget because we just you know spent. Well, right. or is it not? Yeah, there's not, another side to it. Like to right. And I, you know, the, one of the, the thoughts behind this was, you know, of course, we do want to support local businesses. However, when speaking of what Shane said about the internet. When we have a local vendor that charges us eighty dollars for a case of paper, and to go out online and get it, it's thirty-six dollars for that same case of paper. Right? At, at what point do we draw a line and say, "And say, hey, we we love supporting you as a local business. We'll go ahead and up front, we'll buy a whole pallet of paper from you if you can get the, the price on it. We know we're going to use it. However, you've got to get us within this price point. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to procure from that local vendor." Um, Again, how much did it cost in the long run? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the point I'm getting at. Do, do we want to, and, and this <clears throat> flies against me being in sales, because I hated people who did this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But do we, want to, do we want to put a clause in there that if, uh, to give a local vendor a chance to meet, you know, that price? Okay, so if they, if they lost the bid and Pat's the, the local vendor and he bid on it and he was $10,000 more than a Green Bay vendor, do we want to say, well, we'll, we'll give you, we'll you lower the price $10,000, we'll give you a chance to well, I to think you might bid? be getting, treading on thin ice, thin ice when you start, start talking about changing bids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will. Would think. Well, that's what you were talking about at Rima Paper. You're beating them down on price, saying, hey, I'm, <laughs> sure. I can buy it a lot cheaper if we, well, you want to meet it. Essentially, but, what we'd be doing, and to John's point, is we'd be receiving an estimate, not a bid, because we're not required to receive bids under anything that isn't public construction and doesn't exceed $25,000 of value. So we're asking for an estimate, and if that estimate is exceeded by whatever it is, we can come back to the local vendor and say, hey, can you... Yeah, and you come up with a better estimate. It's not necessarily even an estimate. Sometimes it's just pricing. Yeah. I, I've Comparison. done this already with um, one of our managers prefers to buy cases of paper locally. Mm -hmm. And they cost way more than what we can get from Office Depot. And so I've talked to this store and asked them, you know, can you come closer to this price. They can't. You know. So, so they're not, they probably wouldn't so what is wouldn't your, even so manage to but be my this. question then is what are you doing? Are you still buying it locally? <coughs> or did you buy it from office Well that's why we don't have a policy. policy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so at the moment each right manager now, is doing what they yeah, want. Right yeah that's it. Right now your managers have the authority to go out and purchase based on historical precedents. What this policy does is uniformly sit something across the board that says, hey, we want to support something local. However, we don't want to bleed the taxpayers because we're supporting something local. Yeah. Well, there's a flip, flip, flip side to that, too. You know, some people abuse that policy, and because you're, you know, the government, the local, That's I'll, right. I'll charge you more. Yep. You know, because you can pay it. You know, That's right. We have an endless supply of money. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Coming out of their pocket. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they don't think that way. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we get a motion on this of some form? I'll make the motion we approve resolution 281. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. 281021114, creating a local purchasing policy. Second, as amended or presented? Uh, as amended, as Mr. Clove indicated originally for clarification purposes. I don't have yes. those notes. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?
move them right along. Okay, so this one will have to be. Yep. It's a lot of scrolling. Item number three, consider a motion to approve management goals for fiscal year 2014. So, I'll just clarify this. Uh, one of the things that I feel like I need to be equipped to do a good job for you all is to have some guidelines about the goals and objectives that I'm after. I've not asked the board uh, at this point to develop its own goals and objectives, uh, largely because we have so many irons in the fire at this point, and it uh, almost seems superfluous. However, when we're working down at a staff level, I would like to have some targets for things that we're working to achieve on a consistent basis. So I, after being here for a number of months, outlined five areas that I think we can do a much better job on. Um, and they're detailed in the board report there. Um, number one, ensuring that operational expenditures do not exceed budgeted sums. I feel like we owe it to the taxpayers to ensure that this is the budgeted amount and we should have some very valid reason why we would exceed the budget in amount. Uh, number two, coordinate distribution of board and committee minutes with action items among staff to ensure appropriate staff action. Right now we don't do that and Juliana, this is actually her idea, I think it's a brilliant one, um, to be able to take the action items that you all talk about and reference them over to a staff member as a to-do list, so to speak, so that we're more uh, effectively managing the will of the board Number three, uh, it does not look to me like we went after many smaller grants prior to me coming on board. I really don't see any detail from that. So we need to really research, uh, I'm sorry, identify research and produce one external grant application each month to augment our local funding. Why shouldn't we be seeking outside funding in order to uh, you know, meet our uh, overall goals and objectives? Um, Number four, this is probably the big one, complete major projects as identified by the board. And as I indicated, we have a number of irons in the fire. And I'd say that at least 60% of my time now is just on project management tasks, one thing or another. Um, so hopefully we can get all those completed and, and try to minimize cost. Uh, number five, work to develop leadership potential of existing staff members as well as potential new staff members. Um, one of my thoughts is that I would like to flatten the organization as much as possible. If you look at Apple as an example of a successful flat company, um, they empower their managers to make many decisions. And part of this, if you've been in the Merida committee meetings, has been to empower Wendy to make decisions and manage that as an enterprise fund. It's a goal that I'd like to continue to pursue, um, as well as as we transition into other areas. Um, continue that flattening process. So that's as I've outlined them. I'm free if you guys want to throw daggers at me on when we could go. Um, I can I can dodge one. <laughs> Actually I think they see that they they sound great and being able to uh, develop that leadership potential is it's critical to have those goals and action steps clearly delineated or there's no performance measures for people. So I think it's making a lot of sense. Um, my only question of all of it was when you, number three, you said staff will identify research and produce. Are you going to manage who is responsible yes. at various times for Yes, and I'll tell you right now, I've got those. two different staff members that prior to me coming on board have never written grants and never been given the opportunity to write grants. And I think that's, if you, if you look at what there are motivators and they're compensators, right? Those are two very different things. A compensator is me paying you to want what I want, and that really is a poor means to motivate a staff to do something. A motivator, or examples of those are things like an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to have responsibility. Um, those are the things that really build a cohesive team and build a strong organization. So to hand a staff member an opportunity to offer a grant, especially if they offer a successful one, is a victory that they get it is a, a feeling unlike anything else they'll have is just a line staff member. So again, two staff members now are writing grants they never would have had an opportunity to do um, if we weren't going through this flattening process. And I'm anxious to see how successful they are at the end. If nothing else, they will have gained experience on an administrative level in authoring a grant. And even if they're unsuccessful in this application, guess what? There's another application period coming up sometime in the near future, and we'll just keep resubmitting. 
on two weeks. And you're able to coach them on the grant writing skills yes. aspect. Of yes, and there's, there's actually one of our staff members that um, he's worked very hard to produce one, and I'm thus far very pleased with the outcome. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the identified management goals for 2014. Second. Other discussion? Looks good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Actually, I guess I do. On the back, on the bottom of this is. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Past adopted that. by state. <laughs> SB okay. 566 I made yeah. a boo boo. I borrowed my last board report and forgot to delete this line. So obviously, <laughs> I can create another management goal, which is Zeke, you need to read your own work. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Self motivator, look at that. Yep. <laughs> item number six. I'm sorry, item number four. Ooh. Consider a motion to approve election inspectors. Motion by Lino. Second. Um, I have a question. Do we need the seven or eight poll workers for our elections that show up with 200 people? That's required. That's required. Statute. It's all required yeah. by statute. Required by statute, regardless of how many people you yes. have. Just one person shows up, you still have to have it. Wisconsin rules, John. Just bring that up with Mr. Walker when he's at the lunch <laughs> and church. I will. And a couple weeks. I, it just, I, I mean, I understand it, but it's, it's well, you know, they're all sitting there talking to each other yes. all day. It's, 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 it's a nice gig, John. It is. Yeah. I know it's a nice gig. <laughs> you want to fly? John, you'll be there one day. You'll be yeah. sitting there working the phone. <laughs> I am retired. Eating donut. I'm doing all the work I'm doing. <laughs> you got to be a little further along in the retirement process. <laughs> One foot in the grave. <laughs> uh, just, just a minor item on this. I notice you have um, Dwight and Mary Jo at one address, and there's a uh, Fred Landstrom at the same address. Is that? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just reached out and bit me. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Evens are on the water side. Odds are on. Wait. He should be. Odds should be on the water side. So we'll see 9-5? No, the Andersons then would be... 9-5. 9-5? Yeah. Can we approve this as a minimum? Yes. Yeah. Subject to correction of any address. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Odds are on water side, evens are on... I make a motion to approve. There's actually a motion ready. We oh, need a second. Oh, you can second I'll second it. Jump right in there, yeah, right there after me. Yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Reporting county activities from County Supervisor Dave Lino. I do have something this month, a couple of things. And they have to do with Sister Bay Liberty Grove. But before I get to that, um, at the February 25th meeting, um, Door County Administrator Maureen um, appointed a new EMS director to replace the director who left, uh, Dan Williams. Dan Williams was a long-term employee for us in the past. He's worked in uh, County EMS for on and off for a number of years. He is a state-level um, individual who's widely regarded as one of the best EMS consultants in the state of Wisconsin. So the county was happy to get him back in the EMS director role. Okay. Transfer of non-budgeted funds. Um, Door County unanticipated retirements. There was 13 or 14 retirements that took place right at the end of the year. Um, it wasn't necessarily unexpected. The, the county expected when Act 10 uh, went into full effect within Door County and compensation plan changes were made uh, that a number of employees would probably choose to retire um, instead of continuing on in their current roles, which, which was fine. They were eligible to retire and, and that's what they chose to do. However, there was still from the 
existing compensation plans that were in place under some of the bargaining units, there are still uh, individuals that have accrued a fair amount of money mm -hmm. that they can take out at a basically a 50 percent payout um, when they choose to retire. So for these 12 or 13 individuals, I believe we had to, I don't have the number right in front of me, so don't quote this, but I think we had to transfer about two hundred and forty dollars or $250,000 from a payroll contingency fund back into each of those departments where those individuals worked to replenish their budget uh, for 2014 uh, as these individuals were paid out. Because you can't budget for somebody retiring, you don't know when they're going to retire. Dave, do you recall the total amount of overhang? Um, it's, it's like uh, don't, again, don't quote. I can I can get this information for you, but sure. it's in excess of two and a half to three million dollars potential. Um, right. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to ultimately end up paying that out. It depends on whether, in fact, they retire. If they have enough years when they do retire, if they've chose to change uh, plans, for instance, PTO plans, they can shift things. So there's a number of factors involved, but that's a potential liability that's out there. And we do have payroll contingency reserves in place for when things like this happen. But you can't plan within a budget, a, a department budget, that that department head doesn't know when the budget is put in place in November that somebody's going to choose to retire in March. Because they don't typically tell you uh, very far in advance. So if that individual retires in March and you have to do a $30,000 payout that comes out of that department's budget. Okay. So what this kind of action does is replenish that budget money for that for the, that department. The lesson learned here is we don't have a contingency budget within the village and we're faced with probably some of the same situations in the uh, future. No. We have some guarantee. We, we, when I was on personnel, we were talking about uh, what was it that we uh, paid in absence or in lieu of work or whatever that they could accrue. Okay. They could accrue up to 250 days or 260 days of contract. But that doesn't time. get paid out unless they use it. Uh, but it gets paid out at retirement. If they if they retire and then it gets paid out as a comp, comp time type thing, because that was one of our things, we could potentially budget and be $20,000. The bigger, the bigger item that we have is um, um, two, two long-standing employees have were grandfathered in under an old sick leave policy. They can be paid, and they had accrued enormous amounts of sick leave. They are no longer accruing any until they get back down to the 240 that, that everybody else has. But um, they would have to be paid out at 50% of that sick leave at whatever their current rate of pay is. I believe they're the only only ones we have any liability on, correct? <coughs> well, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, to John's point, um, this is something we'll discuss in admin and comp, controlling use of comp time, and accrual of comp time is something we're going to have to take a look at. And there's also accrual of vacation. Yeah. We had that situation. And that's, yeah, time. that's admin and comp yeah. also. Well, that's where the comp yeah. time comes in, is they start adding it as vacation, and they pay them off their vacation time due mm -hmm. when they retire. You know, we'll, we'll be looking at those sorts of things in the admin account plan. Yep. Um, third item was um, the simulcast radio system. This has to do with Sister Bay Liberty Grove. Mm -hmm. Chris Heck, who is a great grant writer, <laughs> if you recall, got a FEMA grant a year ago for $1.125 million for the Sister Bay Liberty Grove Fire Department to help put in place throughout the county simul simulcast paging. And what I mean by that is, here's what happens. Right now, let's say there's 13 towers in Door County. That if you are an EMS responder, um, the tower that you, that you live closest to, if there's a page, let's say, for Jacksonport, there's two towers in the Jacksonport Bailey's Harbor area. The system kind of determines electronically what tower that signal is going to be sent off of. If you're a little far away or down in a valley, you may never get the page okay, that that happened. And maybe there's a tower that's actually closer to you, but the system chose not to, to broadcast the, the page over that system. What the grant allows uh, the county to do is take all the EMS uh, paging and simulcast them on all 13 towers simultaneously. 
So no matter where you are in the system, whether you're between two towers or not, um, you'll receive the page. And that's the idea behind it. So that's what's being done for the 1.125 million. The bids came in um, and were awarded to Baycom Electrics out of Green Bay, I believe, last month. But Baycom came back and asked the county, there's three other broadcast systems that are also used, police, fire, ambulance, et cetera, um, that could also be simulcast at the same time. And they would do the additional three for an additional $750,000. So the board did agree. Uh, IS committee evaluated it, finance evaluated it, everybody agreed and sent to the county board and they approved it to transfer $750,000 from the unassigned fund balance to this project uh, to make it basically a $2,125,000 project to do the simulcasting on all four frequencies simultaneously. And it should eliminate a lot of uh, issues, response issues. So, but it all started with Chris Heck and writing grants and getting that, that grant money to have this done. This is a tremendous thing to have done throughout the whole county. And last but not least, um, this also was brought up last year. Um, if you would like, and Washington Island chose to do this, and I think it was Union and Gardner, or Gardner that chose to do this, you can have an ordinance changed by the county so you can use all-terrain vehicles on your village streets, city streets, whatever, township streets. You have to put up certain signage, etc. So the town of Washington, i.e. Washington Island, came and approached uh, the board to do that last month, so that was also approved. And I have heard there was some discussion about doing this also in Liberty Grove. So that may have come up again. And that's all I got. Seven hundred up to seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay. We had a discussion about that. Was that ever passed within Sister Bay or I thought we did. The utility vehicle? Well, yeah, utility vehicle vehicles passed. up to 35 miles yeah. an hour. I thought we followed it, the county. It wasn't all parks terrain did. vehicles. No, right. This had to do speed. with like people movers. Yeah, yeah. Golf 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 yeah. right. That it wasn't yeah. a four wheeler. But was if you want to do a Gibraltar grill type thing or yep. like an right. airport cart right. type thing, that's what they were talking right. about. This, this is more intended for somebody, it's winter and you got ice out of the bay and you want to have back and forth your fish ante. You want to park over in the uh, marina long-term parking lot. Yep. There's lots of trailers, and right. you take your four-wheeler and head down the main drag and out into the ice. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what allowed you to do. So this came up in Southern Door, where they have a lot of ice shanties out on the ice, and there'd be hundreds of trailers parked mm -hmm. up and down the roads. They're trying to get into parking lots that were close by, and, and it wasn't possible. So this allowed them to have off-street parking some distance uh, from the shoreline entry points that allowed them to use the vehicles on mm -hmm. main roads. Okay. So okay. same thing. Same thing now with Washington Island. But it makes a lot of sense. All those all, all those ATVs have tail lights and yeah, you know, yeah. headlights and stuff like that, so they are street compliant. Yeah. The, the biggest issue becomes, in order to do this, you have to have certain signage that complies with the state requirements, marking the roads that the ATVs laws? can actually operate on. Are there helmet laws uh, for ATVs? Mm, like I think I think eye protection, but not necessarily helmets. Yeah. They recommend it, but I don't know that it's you must wear one. No. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's required. Well, Just like motorcycles, well. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. Gotta watch this fish. No helmet law in Wisconsin on motorcycles. Nope. I used to when they repealed it. Yeah. No, just eye protection. Way to go, software law. <laughs> Review of the financial statements, consideration of a motion to approve the monthly bills. I'll make a motion to approve the monthly bills in the amount of one million seven hundred twelve thousand three hundred twenty-one dollars and seven cents. I'll second it. Discussion. The um, uh, a little over one point five million of that amount mm -hmm. is money that we had to pay to the county and the schools after the mm -hmm. mid-year tax collection. Mm -hmm. So you're down to. About two hundred eleven thousand four hundred <coughs> is the amount that you're really spending here. That makes it seem so much better. <laughs> <laughs> we had the same thing last month. Yeah, I was going to say our local buying practices aren't working. Out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is there any questions about the village financials that Juliana has in here? Are there any, which are we doing first? The table? Well, on the on the Zoom, the uh, village financials are there first. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just the, the, the well, budget, well, general the budget. Month, there. General ledger yeah. is there. Yeah. yeah. The, these um, the the audit has been completed, and I and all of the adjusting entries have been entered here. So these are going to be the final numbers unless they find something else before they print the audited statements. Um, and we should, we will probably see Mike Konechny uh, at the May board meeting to discuss this. Okay. Or to discuss their, yeah. their report. So but anyway, I thought you might like to see the numbers. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Page four of the general fund. Or twelve one. Uh, building inspection services. I think at one time, you know, we didn't receive as much from those types of fees, but then we, the village, might capture more of those revenues. Yeah, the fees. The fees are shown on page one, okay. under licenses and permits. Um, we took in sixteen thousand, okay. close to three hundred. Yeah. And paid out and that paid 8, out 8,800. Okay. And it's but we're supposed to be paying out 90 percent, but there was there was a the first building inspector that we had after um, independent inspection. In, independent mm -hmm. inspection. Um, he wanted to handle the the funds. Fi the funding differently. Um, he was keeping the money, and than paying us back the 10%. Okay. And uh, when our auditor saw that, he was not pleased. And so we had to change it mid-year. That's why this didn't come out right. OK. We are still engaged with the state for commercial inspections. And that money is retained locally. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would also change. Yes, yeah. there isn't going to be a a 10%, a 90% yeah, difference. It's 100% retained right. locally. Okay. Any other questions on the financials? Is there anything else you'd like to say about them, Julia? The um, unassigned fund balance um, has dropped about a percentage and a half points below our uh, 25 percent goal. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to below our target. Ba uh, yeah, based on based on these numbers here. Okay. And that's audited numbers. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Any other questions on financials? Anybody? Okay. Let's move to the expenditures. Under village, we'll start with the village. I have a question on page 45. And what's the um, under uh, Pinkert Law Firm on Pavilion? $539. Okay. I don't have that page numbering in front oh, of I'm me. sorry. Can That's the uh, Zoom page. It's page 7 of Village Bills. Thank you. Go. <coughs> Pinkert Law Firm. Which one? Which uh, you got uh, Pavilion. Pavilion for $539. What are we paying them for the pavilion for? That was review of the contract. So, so you not to write the contract, just to review it, or to yeah, that was review of it. It was a contract that was developed by um, Dimension Four, and I wanted it going through with a fine tooth comb okay. before we signed off on it. Okay. Then page eight of the village report, page forty-six on the Zoom. You got septic maintenance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a fun one. Yeah. Two thousand fifty-four dollars, and I have two questions on that. One, we don't have any septics, and number two, why isn't it utilities? It's called it's winter and frozen pipes. These are yeah, frozen laterals. Um, when we hear a gurgling noise uh, in the toilets of the admin building, or Pam can speak of this it's, because she's yeah. dealing with it at the post office too. Yes. Pam's you, stories are worse than ours. When you flush and it goes up instead of down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Henderson Park's only a bucket. Need a bucket. <laughs> Ten bucks for a bucket. How about that? Let's put that in the budget. Yeah. There, so, it, it was an unanticipated expense, and it is on the village because those are village properties, not utilities properties. Just like when we have a customer, if their lateral freezes, that's up to them to take care of. So is it, do they just do a rotor router on it, like a plumbing? Do we have that capability at our utilities department? We do all of our own pipes and stuff like that. It could, could I, we have called our utilities? I asked like we John, I, I asked a question and the answer was no, because okay. apparently they just don't have the equipment. Okay. We, just... we had three days with no capability at the post office. It's not fun going to Al's or going. Can I help you with stamps? Hey, man, that's what they sell those porta potties for. <laughs> 75 bucks, yeah. It's a lot better than 75 or 2500. Um, I have one more, my favorite subject, and that's page 47. Oh, I knew. I knew this is. What, uh, what page does that show? That's the page own? nine. Page nine. Knowledge. Yeah. Wisconsin Public Service. We got uh, uh, Doc J Doc of 750 and uh, the uh, Doc of 1737 dollars um, for electrical. I can and guess that's bubblers. I, uh, is it bubblers or is it lights? Um, I mean, both. It's probably both. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, I think you've answered my question for me because I, I bring this up all the time. I think we need to turn those off. The bubblers? Have, no, not the bubblers. <laughs> we can have a separate surface on the bubblers. Okay. The trouble is we, we light up all of our lighthouses on the marina to keep the bubblers running because they come off of that surface. Okay. For $2,000, you know, if we're doing that, it'd probably pay us to buy a new switch or have the Action Electric come down and put a separate switch in. Okay. That we run a separate electrical line for bubblers and keep that expense down instead of lighting lighting lighthouses uh, for the ice. You know, is it that fun. much difference though? Because the sports complex is fourteen hundred. Yeah, that's they have outside lights and uh, overhead lights and stuff like that. I guess you know if you think yeah, about well, lighthouse the, lights, the ice oh, skating. The, uh, yeah, uh, right. Skating. I, so it and that's also like inside like lighting as well. They, yeah. They've got to burn way more in terms of lighting up there. You're talking about the little lighthouse. I don't yeah, know. they're talking about the marina pedestal, the lighthouse pedestal. Yeah. They're lit up. Okay. What, and what's those bulbs in there? Really well, well they, they, during the winter, they were always fairly expensive. Over the last several years, yeah. Steve has, has turned off whatever he could. But like, as John said, there was a couple sections he had to leave on in order to power them. Because we're right. plugging I, in the bubblers to them. Okay. okay. I, I have a fault. I don't know if it's it, rather than having that expenditure, can we just go take the, the bulb? Yeah. 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 Well, we've discussed that yeah. too, but I don't know if it's you know. I, you get, it's I guess very difficult you, to do. It, it, yeah. It's probably more it's difficult. Not simple. You know, if kind you're spending two thousand dollars a month for an electrical bill to run bubblers, it might cost. If it cost you five hundred dollars to have action go in there and put well, a separate right. circuit to it, maybe, maybe, but whatever. Maybe worth looking into. I know when yeah. I think we looked at something else, and because of the like length of lines, the line, yeah. and the you got to go to a cord much that thicker. Wire and that stuff is really expensive when you're talking about a run of several hundred feet. Okay. But I mean, a couple if you years can do ago, it, we had an estimate by them. It was like seven thousand dollars, seven grand to run the, the Believe it or not, for yeah. one extra box, like that new dock, it was like yeah. seven thousand to get a thirty or fifty amp yeah. one thirty yeah. or fifty amp circuit out there because it's whatever that is, yeah. six hundred feet to the is there all the another panel. option for it, it, just a, another do it. Is it another option just looking to replacing the bulbs with LEDs? Well, there's that. I'm thinking, can we go out and put a switch on that pedestal to the bulb itself? Maybe cut into the pedestal and put a switch on there and just they're switched off. If taking the bulb out is a lot of work, if yeah, we but switch the them, switch off is not hard. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. You hit the switch, now they're all off. Right, but I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the bulbs that are using up that much electricity. Yeah, yeah. It's Probably not. You're running the, the bulbs right. off them. Right. Yes, the, yes, right. they're lit up and on. Right. But it's the pumps off of right. running it. Right. Right. It may be a hundred dollars of the lights, I bet. And the right. sixteen hundred is the bubbler. Well, you look at well, it. We should certainly look at it. Out of TKH, look we're at running it. at least four, I think more than that, of the high wattage bulbs up on the poles and then inside the building, heating the building, and that's fourteen hundred dollars compared to you know the, the horsepower we're putting on those bubblers. Yeah. 
Anyway, it, I, it's pet peeve because it just lights it. <laughs> Don't it house, you know, how, many, how many pumps are we running there? Do you know? Well, there's we had think, as many as ten, but I yeah, thought a couple. I think we're close to that. It was ten or twelve. Yeah. We ended up well, having to put them bubble the uh, new. I think, new I think they're either forty five hundred or fifty five hundred five hundred gallon per hour pumps. So. Yeah, I think they're like either half or one horse. I mean, they're yeah. good right. sized pumps. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm equating it to installing ponds. Yeah. So a 4,500 gallon per hour pump runs about $95 a month to run 24 okay. 7. So we're going to do There you go. So there so you go. Ten yeah. pumps would be $1,000. Yeah. So. Okay. Do the lights have to stay on for safety reasons or docks are closed? No, off? So. Docks no they closed. don't. Anybody else on village? Just a quick question on the propane. I assume that's because uh, oh, yeah. Milton. Everybody. So we really Dry have up. to pay five something a gallon with the uh, pay some more co-op. We had an issue with actually getting propane, and I made a I made a judgment call given the. I guess number one, my inexperience with cold weather, and number two, given that they were issuing, you know, we're not going to honor contract, you know, force majeure letters. Um, I thought we would be remiss not to have propane in the event that we had some elderly people in households that actually ran out of propane to have the library and the fire station fill up. And those were hefty bills to have them fill up. That was last month, so that was like $20,000 last month. Yeah. There's another one here for the library. They started to fill the library again. Yeah, but that was only a thousand dollars or something like that. Right. Compared the to the library pays for their propane. Yeah, no, I think I think that state of emergency has been lifted. That hopefully they've yeah. reduced their cost per gallon. It's now we're back like to our something. contract price. Yeah. With Milton. Oh, that's nice. They're they're honoring now they're it. honoring the contract. Okay. Yeah. under village and okay. under utility. So page three under utilities, 50 under Zoom. Mid <coughs> Midwest Meter Inc. There is an Orion's meter for 50 and three quarter for $8,872. The company that we buy our uh, water meters from used to be called Badger Meter. They've changed their name okay. to Midwest Meter. And these Orion uh, meters are the uh, are actually meter heads that <coughs> provide a transmitter so that there doesn't have to be a wire mm -hmm. to to the outside, outside to box. read the meter. They can be read by a handheld. Okay. So are these going in homes are, and commercial places, or is this? These are going. These are going in everywhere, but we're doing a certain number every year, and this started two years ago. I think. Mm -hmm. So these are replacement meter heads for the yeah, we did yes, years correct. I was told for the wireless yeah. Yeah. Right. transmission. Okay. Right. So it's basically so the guy doesn't have to get out and read. Right. They're switching. They're right. switching. Right. switching. Right. They can do it, it as they it, drive by. It provides. Yeah. It provides <laughs> other other things besides ease of reading. We can actually <laughs> look at the jamming signal to it and get a graph of somebody's usage yep. and figure out. At one time, the there was a sudden increase, yep. you know, if there's a leak or something like that. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Leaks now, yeah. And not only that, I, 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 I came around to it, but at first I wasn't all about it, but Badger stopped carrying the replacement parts for the older ones, mm -hmm. so inevitably we were going to have to switch over. I don't, I don't know how much anybody's ever talked to you guys about metering, but this is one of the things I get excited about when it comes to utilities. <laughs> So in, in, running, in running an electric utility, um, uh, our co-op back in Fremont sent us an old meter box. And this thing had over a million kilowatt hours run through it. I mean, it was just worn out. And they'd done it as a display. And so on one side, you had a compact fluorescent. On the other side, you had an incandescent bulb. And they put a switch between them. You plug the thing into a 110 volt outlet. You could see the meter spin because it had the old analog dial in it. And if you were on incandescent, the thing was spinning around pretty good. You flipped it over to a uh, compact fluorescent, and it slowed down a lot. So we got curious and put an LED bulb in it, and the meter stopped spinning. <laughs> the lesson was put new meters in because they don't pick up 
Super one floor right. right. uh -huh. yeah. 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 Or to change how your bulbs to LED. <laughs> yeah, well that's it. Uh, and it's the same with water meters as well. The, the old gear style meters, after about 10 years, you've got a significant amount of water slipping by them. Uh, you really should replace them. So hang out on those old meters as long as you can. Exactly. Well, yeah, they just when replaced they my the legs. Tell me that last yeah. week. I had a board member yeah. next door who consistently used uh, a thousand gallons. Yeah, Bob Lane came to my house. And that was because yeah. that was the minimum yeah, that our system would flag. Yeah, His meter wasn't spent. No meters. You're on the four-year-old meter. Did you have that? What is it? Yeah, they moved me up because I didn't have that meter on my utility sink. Scott, no wonder. Anything else on the utility financials? No, I'm good. Any other discussion on financials? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Here. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution amendment 031814 to the 2014 budget? This is one that came out of finance uh, and is going to be used to pay for the pavilion project, the overs that was discussed at the previous meeting. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Discussion regarding updates to the Village Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm you know, again, a latecomer to the cycle, and uh, you all have a lot of projects that are taking place, and I would be remiss if I didn't try to go after every opportunity out there that I had to tap into some state or federal money. So I began a conversation with uh, Mr. Clove's favorite um, consulting firm. <laughs> uh, they, they were the ones that made me aware of this, and uh, we, we pursued a conversation with a meeting uh, at DNR's office in Green Bay and went through the process of a multi-grant single application, which... Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Are eight and nine not intertwined? Are, and that's, okay. that's why I'm laying this out. Uh, in going through the grant application guidelines, which will come into number nine, um, we uncovered that our comprehensive outdoor recreation plan, which is required for grant submission, is out of date. And if you read through this, it's, um, it's enlightening because it shows how far we've come, right? And if you look at the map, you'll see that the Johnston property isn't included as being part of the waterfront park. Uh, there are a number of other properties that uh, we've either disposed of or are in the middle of disposing of, or yeah, they've changed in some way. So uh, what I'm asking you all for tonight, and considering this in the context of number nine, which is to come, um, is the ability to uh, contract with JJR for a not to exceed amount of $2,000 to conduct the update to the court. Okay, so in order to do the update to the master plan, or we have to do the update to the master plan in order to submit the grant. Yes. What's the value of the grant that we're talking about potential? Um, I've asked some questions. Uh, that are broad based and there are some items that you all had excluded from the beach uh, project but it's 50% of the total value of the project including the engineering work so we're talking in the ballpark of $750,000 depending on what comes back once we've submitted the grant application. So whether we have somebody else write the grant application or whether you did it yourself you yes. still have to have this updated. That's correct. <coughs> This is the two thousand dollars you're talking about is just to update the comprehensive plan. Yes, sir. So you can write the grant. That's that has nothing to do with what the grant writing proposal oh, is going to be. It's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. And you have to have a engineer update the comprehensive you plan. Don't, you don't have to have an engineer to update it. However, you need to have some really cool software, which we don't have. Um, and you need to have some time. really buddy, some really cool people to operate that really cool yeah, software. There's, there's that. And time, time and time know know what really cool to things to put in there. Are they going to do it so in a timely fashion? Yes, yeah, anyway, that's yeah, the whole point really of doing cool. this is that you guys have to hit this by night one, and I'll have that in the addendum. Is that if they don't have all this ready for submission, we don't pay them. I'm not paying them. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, that's the whole point of doing this. And they give you an, giving you a firm bid price on what on, it cost of this, or is this on uh, the court? It's a not to exceed of two thousand. The gentleman who started this process with me, I hate to even tell you this, John. Okay. He has gone on vacation this week. Okay. With the understanding that he knows as soon as he gets back, he is jumping on this. Yeah, it wouldn't be Bill Bros, would it? No, it's not Bill Bros. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've had one phone call with Bill Bros. The people who Period. write their grants are, are a different segment of yeah. the folks. Um, can you refresh our memories of some of us who have those memories? Mm. We had JJR do a couple of previous grants. Yes. What was the results of writing those grants? Uh, you received approximately two million dollars in two grants um, from JJ Orr's work. Right. They wrote it to get the grant for the Helms, and they wrote it to get the grant for Johnson. Johnson. Um, I did bring along with me a copy of the 2010 grant. This is the amount of work that we're talking about being done between now and May first. May first. And. Yeah, I, if I weren't already working on one that's half the size, I'd tell you that I'd go to bat and write it. But that one also has a deadline. So same, same project going after a different one for the beach. So splitting it, it's not nearly as generous. Okay, so when we get a grant application in, yes, sir. we get it written. It's in a certain funding cycle. Yes, sir. What's the funding cycle for the grant? you'd like J.J. to get involved with? Uh, May 1 deadline, we will know if we've been funded or not by approximately September. They'll be able to issue us a notice of award, hopefully in the October time frame. What we will need to do is to issue a uh, letter of intent to a contractor saying that we are going to award you this contract contingent upon funds availability and grant awarding. Okay, so. Because I know you can't necessarily award things before you get the grant. That's correct. correct. Okay. So in that same period of time, we're going to be rebidding the beach. Yes. And trying to get bids back. It'll rebid in the summer. And the intention then would be to have, by this grant cycle period of time, before prior to being notified, we would have that discussion, that bidding, yes. that potential award ready yes. to go. Yes. And we would sign a letter of intent with a potential vendor contractor, contractor yes. at a period of time, so that if we were awarded the grant, then in fact we could receive the grant. Yes. But it's also potential we're not going to get the grant, but we still need to go through the process anyway if we're going to do the beach. The with or without the grant. Yeah, we have to do the contracting process separate anyway. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And so they go so, ahead so with the project if we didn't get the so grant. They well, you don't need to ask that. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah. Do we have the money? It would <laughs> well, I think if we took, if you no, go back to it, if we, if we do not get this grant, it will be very hard for us to do the project. That's fine. No, that's fine. I mean, but, yeah. right, if you go back to our discussion at finance, there was a number of things that we went through and said we would do or not do. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them. Now, that hasn't all been forwarded yet because we haven't finalized it in finance. Gotcha. I have some memories. I don't have that yeah, one. Th yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I think I was at that meeting. But, yeah. It was in a closed oh, session. Yeah, he had it closed off. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you were to call, I, I know Shane recalls this. There, there was a... Wait. There was a, <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me what that was again? <laughs> Listen, it's got your signature. Oh, God. <laughs> there was a list of items we were going through for capital projects, mm -hmm. and we were trying to decide how they could be funded, how things could be shifted, yep. what would be done with them. Right. And this was just one of those items that was on the list. Yep. And there was a designation after how it would be done. Subsequent to that meeting, Zeke has come up with potentially this grant issue. Gotcha. So if we were to get the grant issue, what we had penciled in there as a possibility for. for Doing that wouldn't be necessary. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, the other shoe that has no to fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other shoe. I have no problem with two thousand dollars to have them, or up to two thousand dollars to have them revise our 
comprehensive plan so we can use it in future grants. I don't have a problem with that. The next year that's going to fall is, oh, I want $30,000 to write this grant. Well, and it might very well be that. Actually, that's the issue I'm worried about. Juliana, actually Juliana, to her credit, worked incredibly hard to come up with a number. And we learned a lot of fun things today, which I won't get into in this meeting. I had to pull all the JJR files going back to 2006 Gosh. Which to find out Lucky how much you. we spent on grant assistance to yeah. get that two, over $2 million. Yeah. And memory service was about $25,000, but that was split over two grants. Okay. So uh, depending on how this shakes out, assuming that we have um, a good chunk of this work already completed. I would hope that we be able to handle this inside of a, a reasonable amount of money. Okay, so if, if you said before, if if we received the grant, you would include the engineering within yes. it. Does that include no. bid writing specs? Okay. It includes all the engineering work, which is yeah. fantastic. Uh, everything we've done up to date. It doesn't include the grant writing. At that point, I think yeah. we're you know. Yeah, so he's going to give us three quarters of a million dollars, and you pay the $10,000. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. right. At that point, glad. I'll take that every sure. day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the long. So we don't know what's going to be yet because this gentleman's out of town. Yes, sir. So once we get this done, let's say we pay the 10 Gs to do this. It'll be 20. What? Okay, we pay, <laughs> the, we pay the X <laughs> amount of dollars. 20. Okay, so we pay the 20000 to do this. Will we be able to use it next year under your guidance as far as just changing the dates around, maybe well, changing a couple words? and that, that depends on if you guys want to sit around a lot of beach for another year. Yeah. And these things don't work retroactively. Yeah. So we potentially could go back into another funding cycle, to be very blunt about your question. Um, and depending on how these bids come back, along with the other bids that we have working, that may be something that comes up for conversation. I know you all had a very tight line or tight timeline plan that the pavilion was going to go in, the beach was going to go in, the underground utility rail was going to happen, DOT was going to do its project, and everything looked very concise. It was very well planned. The unfortunate part is DOT changed what they were going to do. Bids came in higher on some items than what we thought they were, and so now we're back at the table trying to figure out how to juggle all this around and make it all happen. The the next shoe to fall on JJR is I'll write your your new grant or to do that, mm -hmm. but you just as you said we got to rewrite the bid. And now JJR is going to come back there and say, well, geez, to rewrite that bid that I did wrong the first time is going to cost you another ten thousand dollars. Mr. Cuffern had written a letter to JJR. I have not received the full reply from JJR on redoing the bid. I just received a document back from them that did not include any numbers in it. Uh, and as soon as Mr. Cuffman gets back from his trip, he and I'll have that conversation. Are we have already suspended or denied payment yes. on, uh, on all the JJR stuff until we get this rectified. $56 because of that. So that's in the works. Yep. Could we or should we entertain the idea of saying, while we want it, we're okay with the two thousand dollars. We're concerned with what the grant was might cost. We went back and looked at our analysis, and we would have a budget of up to ten thousand yeah, dollars for the grant. It will not exceed this amount. I guess what I'm to, we're bleeding over an item now. Do we just open up discussion on item now? Yeah, I, I, that's okay. why I mentioned we're pretty okay. much talking okay. about right. eight and nine. Um, I don't want to not to exceed amount, and without having that number in hand of a uh, we're not going to exceed this amount, I don't know what it is to tell you. Um, oh, I know, but what yeah. I'm saying is before you commit to spending the two thousand, if right. they're going to say it's going to be thirty thousand, then maybe we're all right with that. But if we're not, is to say we'll do the two only if we know. I, bigger, you know, this I, is this is get you in the game, but yeah. then you got to do. Yeah, no, Pat would say no. I'd spend thirty if it was a guarantee we'd get the grant. In other words, we're going to charge you thirty, but only if our work is successfully submitted and you're funded. Well, I know, but uh, they yeah. can't give you that. Yeah. Plus, well, why can't they? If you're why talking about doing that way. What do you say if it, if you successfully you can't? They're, do that they're all grant writing organizations. <coughs> do it on a funding basis. Yeah. 
but usually the fee goes a oh. lot higher, right? So it's well, like ten percent of the value. Well, but here's the question. I mean, uh, to, to Pat, to what Pat is suggesting, mm -hmm. you know, if you, we to the you no know more than ten thousand mm -hmm. or whatever the number is, what's our exit strategy? They go, my bad, sorry. You know, we're part way into it. Our timeline is mm -hmm. tough, and that we have. What's our recourse if I, if they don't follow through? Are you talking about on finishing the ground on time? Not only that, but getting it. You know, not only finishing it on time, but writing it to the right parameters to be awarded the grant. Well, that's difficult because let me give you an example that happened last year, or the year before. Don't forget, Bob wrote a grant for it was in excess of a million dollars or something. It was submitted. We were ranked number one, and they notified us, "You're number one for funding." Yep. But they gave it to number two, three, four, and five, and we right. got nothing. Right. Now that's not JJR's fault. They wrote right. a great submission, and it was rated. We were rated number one. So some politics got involved there somewhere. Yeah. And the, four other people got funded, and we did. Right. One of the things so, is the grants. I believe it's over a half a million dollars in funding go for uh, the assembly for sign off uh, in their committees. So if we rank high in the funding process, we will then need to press our representatives to fully represent us and okay those grants. I don't know if that's what happened last time, but I know that yeah. was part of the discussion that I had down at DNR. Uh, Pat's suggestion was to use the $2,000 for updating the corp, is it called? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, as leverage. Right. And we'll give you that. I'm, not, but sure, just I'm not sure that's what we want to use. I, I think it's worth getting that done anyway, because any other Grants. Grants yes. that you might, out. that Zeke might want to write right. later on, right. will depend on having that updated. Right. And that's what I was going to bring up. Yeah. And I, I will say that I would want, unless there's some requirement, and I'm, I'm unaware at this point, I don't want to do it for longer than five years. So that way in five years we're not coming back down for another $2,000 for an update. Let's <coughs> recognize that we're completing a substantial portion of our project or projects and that it will largely be maintenance based. Right from this point on, I don't know what other amenities we may want to include, but I can imagine we pretty much bought up the waterfront. <laughs> I, I don't know where else we're going to expand to. <laughs> would it be worth asking them the question if they would be willing to, is there an amount of money they'd be willing to accept based on successful? I could have that conversation. You know, if it's a $20,000 $20, process, but we'll take 50 if uh -huh. we're successful. But nothing if you are not successful. Uh -huh. Yeah, make it performance based, right? Grant based, right? I can have that conversation. That certainly would be part of the negotiation. <clears throat> the but only standard fare is they get paid for going. I, yeah. I like that, that yeah. thought process. I right. Or, more we know or, or it's you know half of what uh, half of what the normal bill is, and a percentage of the su successful mm -hmm. yeah. grant. You know. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't mind you know giving a percent. Am I going back to saying that we'll we'll approve up to a certain amount? You know, if I was JJR and says, well, we we've approved up to fifteen thousand dollars for writing a grant, I'm going to send you a bill for fourteen thousand nine hundred and fifty. Well, and that's why I said you know, ten. So if we, if we it, said yeah, we paid twenty five on two, yeah. then fine. Start at low at ten. Thinking that it'll probably be twelve and a half or fifteen by the time if that was 06 and now we're twenty fourteen. But the, the bills for grant assistance, grant writing assistance, yeah. since I just looked at every single one of them today, are very detailed, and they come in in small amounts, hourly rate. You know, there's some. There was one as low as sixty nine fifty, and then there might be another one that was uh, fifteen hundred. Uh, for another period of time, and they give you the period of time. Who did the work? They're mm -hmm. very specific. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be one final bill of a lump $14, sum. It's, it it's all the time on material basis. Yeah. What they've done. That's but what it is. To your to your points, our goal is to have a successful grant application that's funded, and I can certainly get into it with them, but because time is of the essence on this, and I need. I need them to move on this if we're going to move ahead with it. I need a dollar amount that you all are comfortable in spending. We know that if you took the two grants that were successfully funded and split it down the middle, you're talking about 12.5 was what was basically paid for each grant submission. Right. No, no, no. no. That's 
between. Oh, is yeah, it? yeah. See, yeah. I, I maybe thirteen. Yeah. I yeah. guess. I guess my own feeling is is I'm very uneasy. Okay, because uh, you're open ended, and you're playing in the lottery, as to use your point before on grants, mm. to to do it, and to twelve five doesn't bother me one bit. Right. Twenty does. Okay, and well. the twenty five even more, and thirty. And I see that all the time with JJR in particular, but other ones where it's escalating cost. You know, I mean, it, it's we just did a grant for 40000 for the economic development, and with the idea that, oh, we're going to get, you know, 20000 of that back, didn't get it. Okay, so now we're, you know, 20 additional, 20000 additional dollars in the hole, and it just keeps escalating. Yeah, yeah look, there's, there's another one I'd love to chase down for the next round of economic development we may have, and I'm, I'm talking about that in the context of grants in general that we're speaking of here. Um, we could go one of a couple of routes with this, right? We can continue to pay consultants on the basis that we're paying consultants, or I can go hire a staff member that writes. But until these projects get cleared out, and the other things we're working on get cleared out, our ability to really spend a significant amount of time doing this is limited. Some of these grant applications are a couple of pages, they're easy, we can zip them out, they're not really a problem, or they're a, a four page paper. The ones that are large money grants, much more problematic. And given that we're going to come to an end of these projects in very short order, I think we'd be remiss to go on and hire a staff member. Because then what are we going to have them do once the projects are done? So we're looking at the short term, short term solution. And they require uh, contacts with the DNR, with the yeah. state, with, well, they have meetings, you know. I, I will tell you, uh, Chris Harper made a point to call me and she said, I want you to know I work for you all. Just because JJR is writing the grant does not mean that they have any kind of preferential treatment. Yes, they have contact with me. Yes, they're up there on a regular basis, but that doesn't mean you should hire them unless you have some exigent time reason why you need to hire them. Okay. They don't have any, any pool with DNR above what, what you do or I do or the board does. And she was very, she <coughs> paid me a phone call just for that reason. Well, and to speak to one of our earlier amendments in, in your goals, you're, you're starting to get staff involvement in grant writing, so this is almost a, a ramp up period for that. So if we can buy the time for ramping up for the depth of knowledge that's needed for the grant writing. Right. Um, How much would you imagine that you would hope to pull in a given year for grant writing? It would depend on what projects you identify, Shane. So let's say we, we write as many possible grants as you're saying. So you're, you're looking maybe four grants a month is what your your plan is. Oh, you're saying everybody does one. No, no, no. I'm no. saying the office does one. one. Right oh. now, we yeah. might do one every six months. Right. Okay. Yeah. As a ramp up period for this, my goal was to do one a month. Some of those grants will be very small in funding size. Some of those grants are rather large in funding amount. Um, but if we're not going after it, we're not going to get anything we don't go after. I, I guess I just look at it and saying if you can find, maybe this is off topic mm -hmm. and we can talk about this later, but you know if you're going to save, you know maybe sixty, eighty thousand dollars this year, fifty thousand next year, and then it'll be a consistent twenty thousand dollars every year. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're looking to a part-time grant writer. I, I, I think a free grant writer. writer. Or Just a go consultant. Away. A consultant. No, you know, yeah, where yeah, where I cut my teeth in public administration was doing grant writing, and I started as an intern. So it's a conversation I have later on. Mm -hmm. But to bring them up, to some degree, they can work on that off-site. If they get the lead in, you know, they don't necessarily have to be here on-site to do that. We could find somebody down in Madison who's going to school for public administration or political science who just wants to cut their teeth, that's an option that we could pursue at a later date. Again, right now we're looking at a May 1 deadline yeah. to get well, this thing the, launched. The, the, the flip side of the discussion on the grant, I mean, uh, uh, whether we do a consultant or whatever, the flip side is, as much as I hate to say it, mm -hmm. as you know my feeling on JJR and the other, is we're in for a pound already. And we've got so much invested in this project mm -hmm. To turn around and not do it, or not go for the grant, you know, for ten or fifteen thousand now, 
sure. seems ludicrous. So I drop it, the bucket. It, it, but it, but it's it, the Plus question I is where do you end? I need to point out again too. Just I, I agree with everything John says. I, I really hate having to use JJR all the time for this stuff. They wrote four grants for us. Three out of four grants were successful to the tune of over two million dollars. The third one, we were number one. We didn't get funded. That wasn't their fault. Mm -hmm. So it is a different group within JJR that writes these grants. And they've been pretty successful for us. No guarantee, but I think you got to keep yeah. that in mind, too. In a very short time period, again, they were the ones that identified the court. And this was in an effort to gain our business in this. They started to review the documents and what it would take for the submission. Number one, can we get it done in this time period? And they feel like, yes, they can. Oh, by the way, if you want to score this thing, you've got to do the court. So you need to have that conversation with your board to see if they're on board with doing that. So what 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 number where is assuming we, we agree, and uh, they probably do, two thousand dollars for doing court. the court. Mm -hmm. What number should we agree on for grant writing? Originally when I had, had my conversation, I was going off Zeke's head. Now that Julian's had a chance to go through the numbers based on the past. Uh, the number that I'd like to go after is 12.5, a not to exceed amount. That's based on previous work that they've done. We could reduce it, and I certainly will be working to reduce it, but without knowing what they're going to submit or propose, I don't want to have to call you guys back in for a special meeting and go again. And so do you wait to see what they say before you tell them not to exceed 12.5, or you say... Oh, I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm yeah. waiting for them to tell me. Okay. Uh, they're going to submit it. I'm not going to go say, hey, we'll pay you. No. no. Yeah. Right, so, so why don't we make a motion to fifteen thousand for the two of them? You know, two thousand and you know, up to fifteen thousand dollars and call it the combined. I mean two and thirteen? Yeah, it, well it's two and thirteen yeah. is is what our goal is and that's you know, we'll say we'll do up to and it, that's part of the grant writing. You have to do the core first and then you have to do the other one. So Let's go with 15 and see where we come out. See if they come back and say, no, it's got to be a lot more than this, or it's going to be. Is that a motion? So I make a motion that we contract with JJR to write the new core project. Is, uh, is it called Corp? Corp. 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 Uh, project and a grant to be submitted for the beach project uh, by May 1, up to $15,000. A second? No second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. If that covers number nine. What about number eight? It covers eight, eight, and, eight, eight and nine. Let's pull them. Okay, then I do have a question. Sorry. Okay. But does JJR have adequate understanding of what the update? is going to be to this plan from guidance or in instruction from? We will most probably, or I will most probably end up providing the information to do the update and we probably will have to have one parks meeting based around that. Okay. Yes. Donna, they've done, uh, they've, they've already done, done most of this because yeah. they did the pavilion and the beach and uh, they've already done it. Like, the, yeah, they've already done sure all the Johnson right. Park and That's all right. the other stuff. So if you look at the core That's all the demographic information, right. that's available from the U.S. Census Bureau. Right. So they'll pull that in and update it. It's a matter of getting our files and updating that. So any substantive change that from the one that ended in 2012? Yes, it'll go to park. Okay. Is this your motion then, John, that the Village Board authorizes Jackson to enter into a contract with JJR for updating of the Village of Sister Bay's comprehensive outdoor recreation plan and author the DNR grant package for soil and water conservation, creation of recreational trails, and Knowles Nelson stewardship funding for a not to exceed amount of $15,000? Did you put May 1 by May 1 in there? By May 1, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's why are we? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they've got to have it done. It's, it's, you got to do it. Let me know when you're ready. You know? Okay. Item number 10 discussion regarding matters in place in the future agenda referred to committee, official, or employee. Well, should we consider the UTV? 
who've done the low speed vehicles, other Liberty Groves talked about that. That's a good idea. Sure. Take a look. Mm -hmm. A discussion of evaluating whether to have a staff UTV. or what and then what about the staff grant writing too? Um or so let's Probably Let's bring it up at a later date. Okay. But the, this grant should be discussed next meeting. If we ought to be the yeah. May meeting. We better be. Well, it's April, so right. that's you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. It'll be May meeting. Talking about. Um, however, speaking of the April meeting, we'd Would like you? to have it on Monday the 14th rather than Tuesday the 15th. Just that's what you told me. Yeah, the 14th. Yes, sir. Okay. I missed my official last day. It would be the 14th. <laughs> so the 14th. We'll have an yeah, important just for you, be you guys. Well, so it will be. So I'll be at that next board. The thing is, there's a number of things that may need to be finished up with this board prior to the new board taking seats. The new board takes seats the 15th. It, uh -huh. The other issue is it gives me an opportunity to work with the new board members and our department has to work with the new board members to really give them the ins and outs of what goes on. Here's here's what the facilities look like, here's what properties we own, here's some orientation materials, here's our budget. It gives them a moment after they, they know they've been elected to um, come in informed. It'll take them a month just to show them all the downtown stuff that's going on. Yeah. <laughs> It'll take you a month to forget it. Yes. <laughs> Longer than that. Besides <laughs> yeah. that two o'clock meeting, you'll be wanting the board meetings. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be making up meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, wait, that was on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, at the last meeting we it's mentioned Moving right along to committees. Administrative has not met. Will be shortly. The Airshore Oversight has not met. Administrative met or that's No, that's admin and comp. Administrative. Oh, yeah, that's yep. okay. Coastal Byway. Uh, meeting uh, minutes of the February 27th meeting are in your packet. Um, I have the new approved and final interpretive plan. It was very similar to what you saw. We changed a little bit of wording. That is about it. And um, the library will get a copy, uh, not to be distributed. It's a reference only. So I'll be dropping that off uh, soon this week, hopefully. Uh, worked on some brochure changes. Um, and last but not least, Janelle handed out a picture of our um, kiosk panels, which we put on a movable object, and it's going to be, this was in the um, St. Patrick's Day Parade, and it will be in Mayfest. I'm going to request that we're able to use it at Marina Fest and Fall Fest. And... Uh, can, when you do that request, you add on the um, car show Sunday yeah. of uh, Memorial Day weekend. Five. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. I shall do that. Yeah. So anyway, that is it. Any questions? They did a good job with this. I, I think they, whoever did the gentleman named Chuck Tice did that. Those are plastic tubes that uh, he spray painted, and um, yeah, I don't know where they got the base. I don't know, but he did it, a good it, job. It, it, it looks nice. Yeah, it, it looks nice. DC ECD. Uh, February tenth meeting minutes. Uh, we covered that last month. The last meeting that we had here was the. 10th of March, uh, presentation uh, on workforce grant programs from a woman from uh, NWTC. 
Uh, you're all aware that Governor Walker will be here on the 14th. Um, anybody who wants to come, we're, we're looking at, uh, uh, we're going to have assigned seating this year, which we haven't had in the past. But we're looking to get... Uh, Isn't that the night of our board meeting? Yep. It's the morning of. Morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, a it's noon. It's a lunch. Yeah. 1130. We could invite him to our board meeting. And uh, anyway, any names that I can get, anybody who's interested in coming? So I've got, I'll have got an email out right now. It's uh, Mr. Clove, uh, Ms. Scattergood, Mr. Duffy, and uh, Spass. I know you've got a couple that are going with another organization, I think. Uh, if if there's room. Things. Dave, do you want to sit or are you going to sit with the board of the, the county? county. Okay. Would, um, I know you said you'd pay for board members. My uh, wife would like to go, and I'll pay for her. Yeah. But could she just, be put in on our reservation? Yeah, yes. I was going to say, if you guys want to do that, I'll you just know, put it on uh, our reimbursed ability. Because she's indicated she'd like to go. I'll pay the her fee, but just yeah. so she has a table. Oh, uh, no, I think I've got the full list. I'll go ahead and submit that. Would you? To, yeah. Just, yeah. just, just yeah. give it to me. I talked to Bill Shudor this afternoon, and, and okay. he said it'd be, it'd be okay. fine. He'd I talked to uh, Cindy earlier. And I had lined up the ones that had let me know, and you were one of them. All right. um, but I've got to call back out on the others. But I didn't. I didn't add my wife on that one. She talked about it afterwards, so I'll bring a check in for Janelle. Okay. That is fourteen. Uh, fourteen. Please add her to my. Yeah, at Stone Harbor. No. That's uh, it's the annual DCDC meeting. It's also the twenty fifth anniversary. See if I can get off of work for it. Board meeting that night. Stone Harbor. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Um, also, did a letter of support for um, Bay Ship again, a harbor assistant program grant. Uh, they want to add new dock walls in berths one and two and a partial dock wall in berth three. Um, of course, this will help us as far as producing ships and also the winter fleet uh, maintenance. So uh, that's a grant that we supporting. Um, home construction, uh, they're finishing up the Kiwani County, County House. Um, hopefully getting it done that's already been sold and there's a, one that they're talking about now in Door County for 2014 and 15. This again, the high school kids are doing this and uh, they already have a buyer for the house oh, so great. yeah nice. it's um and uh, i don't know if any of you heard uh, the city of sturgeon bay had put in to become a coast guard city apparently that was approved so um <clears throat> excuse me sometime in may there'll be a celebration of that okay thank you sir yeah. economic development Minutes are in your packet. Any questions? Uh, I have a question on the, the, the where did we ever get our final 20 plans uh, from the economic development? Yes, sir. Uh, thing we have 20 power. Yes, we do. Power. We also have the uh, the PowerPoint, and I have a DVD oil CD of that information. Um, I have given some to some of the property owners of those 20. <laughs> um, do you ever thought about maybe showing that CD to the board sometime at one of the future meetings? Because um, I mean, we've discussed it as it went along. We never saw their end product. Okay. It might be yeah. nice to know it. Okay. I apologize. I thought the board had seen that one. We'll put that up there okay. under item nine. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, not now but when we get to the uh when we get to the end anything else on Eka? finance well we had our meeting and i think the two notable things that weren't covered under closed session were the local purchases a purchasing policy which we discussed and then also the capital projects list of where we're going to find that money in the future which is still a work in progress but we got through a good majority of it i think it's just finishing it up and trying to figure out how and where and what tree we're going to pick the money off of. So, <laughs> and I, I think outside. When you find it, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I think outside of that. He was thinking so hard that he recessed the February 12th meeting <laughs> and reconvened it yeah, on the 17th. Good. He had to think about it for five days. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard. It was hurting. But, um, but outside of that, I think most of the other stuff, I it was all held in closed session. So At the moment, yes. 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 Fire. Fire. Um, Don't minutes. everybody run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, minutes in the packet. We've been down to Sturgeon Bay a couple of times to approve the uh, project Dave talked about since it's stemmed from the Sister Bay of Liberty Grove Fire Board. So it was good to see their meeting room and that we were well received. And That's the kind of room we're going to build here, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> With the special cramp camera angle that you're not in the right. picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anything else really pressing. Are we buying that truck? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, that could be noted in finance as well that we approved the <laughs> switch from the CIP, which, by the way, will uh, take three older trucks oh, that are nice. requiring maintenance off the rolls so hopefully there's some cost savings yep. from the sense of maintenance and now if we go into this um, uh, district fire district we would appear to be the most well suited there's going to be requirements entering into that and there may be participants whose equipment does not meet the minimum standards, they would have to come up to those standards, whereas I, bl I believe we wouldn't have any apparatus that would require any any other expenditure uh, to enter into that. To add on the fence comments, the three fire trucks uh, that will become redundant as a result of this acquisition will get surplused out, and those monies will be returned back to their respective municipalities. So there'll be some money put back in our CIP for that. Do you do you know approximately when we'll be asked to pay? Pay that? Um, no, but I can ask Chris. You know that was it takes a month to build those yeah. things. You you yeah. give a commitment, and I I think we weren't going to take delivery until the fall. Last time we paid the whole amount quite a time in advance. Well, now that you mention that, and then that. we got interest back. Yeah, back. yeah, there was there there was an incentive, uh, and we did discuss that at the meeting. Now I'm yeah. trying to think. There was like $4, right. If you paid about in ninety advance. percent yeah. in advance, then you'd get a four thousand dollar discount. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know if it's, it's well, well, we're ready if they're whenever they are. Okay. We're, we're not going to make four thousand dollars in interest on the nope. money. So no, might no, well, not that. No. Yeah, might as well save it. Uh, yeah. And Liberty Grove got their check approved, so they're good too. Yeah. They had to get approved. They had to, That was one of the items voted on, but they got it approved. I'll find out though. Fire District Exploratory, nothing else has occurred. Historical Society. No. Has not met? Well, they met last week while we were all public county. Library. The minutes for February 18th are in the packets. We're going to meet again April 8th. And we just have problems with freezing water propane and freezing on the roof. Whatever happened with the Milton issue here, that's pretty interesting. That is interesting and that's I don't know, did Ralph talk to you about that bill because I know that they weren't wanting to pay it? Oh, oh yes, we've been very active on that issue and uh, but the, the Milton supervisor who looked into it agrees with us that that mm -hmm one bill can't possibly be for the library. A driver filled oh, mm -hmm. the library tank two days in a row. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a tank that holds a thousand gallons put in 800 one day and 550 <laughs> <laughs> um, 
impossible. Yeah, exactly. So ask, but, him, ask, but, him, ask him to turn the thermostat down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the supervisor had to, had to send it to his boss because he couldn't figure it out. So he was going to take the he was going to go there with the driver sometime this week and hope that if the driver were standing there. He might be able to remember where he was. <laughs> uh, interesting comment on the thermostat. And I love the library. It's great. I went in there and I was so hot and I thought it's because I walked to the library. And I was at the turn in desk and there's a thermostat, 74 degrees. Holy cow. That's warm. I'll bring that up at the meeting. I know ever since that we got, you know, at, at the post office, since we had the new thing installed, we have it at 68, and that is the warmest it's been. And the, that is a really efficient system. So I'd like to thank the board that approved that whenever, because it, it's not a post. John, John didn't want to. Well, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> you could have came over there in the summer, let me tell you. He said bring in a fire pit. Yeah. <laughs> Buy him a cord of wood is what he said. <laughs> and I know where to, to, to get the paper from now. You know, you do. Pretty blame. I go and walk the print. But yeah, I'll mention, I'll mention turning it down. I'm not, I, I don't know if that's normal or not. I just thought, wow, it's really that's, that's something we should have as a policy at some point for all of our buildings. And I, I know the other areas go to centralized control where they're all set. Yeah. But, yeah, like my aunt said, get that. up and move, put a sweater on. Anything else in the library? 60 miles. Yeah. Marina and Marina Fest. Uh, I'll do Marina and Marina Fest. We'll let the chair there do. Uh, uh, Marina Committee, the, the notes that are, or minutes that are in your packet are from February 4th, which we discussed uh, last time. Uh, we had a uh, meeting this morning, uh, this afternoon, for Marina. Um, the uh, main thing we're, we're talking about is uh, changing some of the bylaws for uh, Marina Fest, which I'll let uh, Shane get into. And then we were going, uh, you know, looking at priorities for uh, long-term, short-term, comprehensive planning and what we're going to go uh, for the Marine. How are we with reservations and such? Reservations issues? were uh, the reservation. I didn't ask them today on what any if they had any reservations in, but uh, for slips we had eight 32-foot slips come available. Six of them she filled, so. uh, sold. Uh, so we have two open 30. Uh, foot slips, and we have three open 40s that she's working on that yeah. list. And 150. Right now. And 150. Um, it's a possibility the 50, she asked how uh -huh. they, they would take it today. Um, but she's just on the residence uh, list uh, going forward, so she's uh, moving so done, forward with that. Done with renewals, moving to waiting. Uh -huh. Yeah, but they're, they're going to be waiting, and she's done a very good job, in my mind, of the 150 slips, if that's all we have with the economy and the price yeah. uh, of what the turnover. And she said that all the slips that are vacant are coming from uh, age or price. Okay, it's either they've gotten to the point where they're old enough they're not boating anymore or they're paying the, the price to boat anymore, or it's uh, the price of the, the slip. Mm -hmm. uh, type thing. So we're we're kind of reaching the the ceiling on our pricing for for slips. Even though we're competitive, the door we're still reaching that cap. Okay. And then as far as Marina Fest goes, we're working forward, getting everything. I guess all of our ducks in a row for Marina Fest, and uh, we're looking at trying to make some amendments to the. I guess more additions to the. Um, bylaws to potentially include for-profit organizations um, without hindering or hurting <coughs> the current bylaws that we have in place now so we're not I guess taking anything away from the heart of what's already there we really want to make sure that we protect that um, but just trying to make sure that we can grow this event to maximize the outlay for everybody and especially in a time when 
our downtown is going to need a little help. So we're going to try to see if we can grow that festival so we're bringing more and more heads into beds and, you know, bodies into stores. Okay. Anything else? Questions? Parks. Minutes are in there from the meeting of February 5th. So, there is the word ski hill in these minutes and one song. Yeah. But, you know, my <laughs> wife says, we're getting a ski hill again! Yeah! <laughs> the time out. There's no ski hill no, coming. That's that's true. True. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. we've, had, we've had some discussion since. No. <laughs> <laughs> gondola, the boy says, can we get a gondola? <laughs> <laughs> in the waterfront of the sports complex. <laughs> Well, I did talk to Steve Jacobson the other day about putting a zip line in on the new water tower. <laughs> They'd like that? Yes, I was going to point out the ski hill also. So yeah, line 40, <laughs> a small ski hill. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. You got my kids, my whole family is really excited. <laughs> they read the minutes too, huh? <laughs> Somebody come and call my wife. Did you hear we're going to get a ski hill? <laughs> No. <laughs> Maybe we need to rethink this. It should be a sweater. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just get think the, in the summer, did, soapbox derby hill in the winter. So yeah. Yeah. The the giant giant water slide. Did, did, did you get this from Stan? With all that soap. <laughs> no. Did no. she get this from Stan? No. I, I have to tell this story where you're saying ski hill. Oh. Zeke went to Scan and gave him a presentation about all the stuff that the village is doing. Okay. Great, great forward thinking, showing him and all that. I go to dinner and I. And a person's dad's in the, you know, in scan says, what is this that I hear we're buying? The village is buying Casperson property, tearing it down and building a pavilion on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the translation that came out of scan. <laughs> Like you're saying that our administrator doesn't communicate with us? <laughs> yeah, it was like, I, it must be the accent. <laughs> I think there might have been a little bit of hearing problem there. Okay, anything else on parks? <laughs> Moving right along. Personnel. I want my no meeting. Plan commission. Minutes are included. And there's no March plan commission. No. Communication technology. But it's planning to. SBAA. Uh, the minutes that are in your packet are from the discussion we had last month, and unfortunately, I was unable to make the meeting due to a baby appointment uh, this <laughs> month. <laughs> um, I guess just a quick rundown on it. We had a snag in the production of a map for. Um, to truly be what SBAA stands for, which is representative of the entire community. And uh, we went back, took it to the drawing board a couple of times, and finally have gotten a map that we think will be um, representative of the entire community, also distributing uh, open flags that will be uniformly displayed throughout the village. Um, those were, were kind of the big things to, uh, to come out there. Teen Center. We met two weeks ago, but there was not a quorum, um, but we still stayed around and discussed um, community outreach things and volunteering to oh, fundraise. in an unofficial capacity. Yeah, right. an unofficial capacity. Yes. So we talked about fundraising for Robbie, um, and I would like to talk to SBAA. I, r I was reading the minutes about the fundraiser for the run. I think that would be a good thing, so I'll talk to Paige. Yep. And maybe even a run during Marina Fest. Oh, you we, know, we I had some conversation earlier today uh, that the um, when you have that conversation, the kids at Walker High School used to do a dump booth or dump town, mm -hmm. and I guess have dropped doing that. So that may be something to yeah, yeah that'd be fun. The to dunk do. take. Especially yeah. at Marina, it's warm enough to do it, yep. not yep. at Fall yep. Fest, but the Yeah, at Marina yeah. Fest, and we'll need to come up with something else for Fall Fest, and yeah. we'll talk about it. Oh, you're going to goat dunk. <laughs> really? You're going to eat up here with a you know, You're drowning goats. <laughs> Sink Sven. <laughs> Buy your goat box to sing to them. Wait, wait, they were goat box. 
Okay, tourism's off. <laughs> um, yep. Met and uh, have a couple of things. Number one, December occupancy rate for Village of Sister Bay was 14.38%. So, uh, in the future, we need to look at items we can do to change that. I also have one other issue that came up, and that is uh, we have one delinquency that's delinquent back from 413 and 513 of uh, $126.94 in April of 13 and $36.96 in May of 13. Um, Okay, so they've done a very good job of collecting them in the past. What's the problem? Um, <laughs> and why are we talking about it here? I'm, I'm bringing it up simply so you know they've done a pretty good job of collecting, but we will have to withhold a liquor license from a hotel if they are not forthcoming with payment. Okay. And they will be made aware of that prior to the liquor license. They have been made aware a number of times. Uh, promises to pay have been broken with TZC, and uh, I'm going to pay a personal visit to there to see if I can... Strong Armand. Do you happen to know what the yeah. occupancy rate from the prior December was? I can pull it up for you. I'm yeah, just I've curious. Got a, I actually got a chart on yeah. all of them. So if you get a little information on the store. I believe it's up this year from what I was looking at. Um, well, I was wondering, even though it was cold with all the snow, I thought we got a lot of snow or something. No, I think the there. county's up, but Sister Bay's down yeah. because we yeah, don't have the construction. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's a couple percent, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I always take the tourism zone numbers with a little grain of salt. Um, <clears throat> everybody can say that Sister Bay is off because of construction, but overall, general business within Door County is off about 25% hmm. this winter. So is that yeah. because of construction in Sister Bay? No. 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 It's cold. It's too cold. Right. Yes. So I know occupancy is up a little bit in Sister well, Bay because they've done, there's several long-term projects going on around other communities and they're staying in Sister Bay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 14.38% uh, the right. number is not off. Like, for example, Sturgeon Bay, 8.79, you know, was their number. I didn't write that down just for comparison reasons. So we had a higher occupancy rate than Sturgeon Bay did in that same time period. Utility. They also had a meth lab in it. cash. And you know that was like right after this book. No, it's a good thing you're off the board now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Utility. Uh, won't be meeting till uh, April. next month. Admin and conversation. Uh, we're scheduled. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Soon. Next Tuesday. Do we have so utilities will just be sorry. Uh, uh, it's going to be Tuesday the first then. No. 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 The eighth. Tuesday the eighth. Okay. First is election day. All right. Waterfront oversight. Minutes are included. There's also an other on here that's not listed, and that would be the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals met and uh, granted a variance for a property up on Shallow Lane to locate a garage um, a little bit closer to the private drive than what would be ordinarily considered in the um, <coughs> zoning book. They also made a recommendation that will come to Planning Commission at their next meeting to consider altering the zoning code um, because they, uh, I guess, had quite a few of these in recent years, similar issues. Okay, very close now. Do you want to do that, Zeke? Um, yeah, this uh, public relations, just a, an update, and this is, I'm going to go back to item number eight, if you're okay with that discussion of items. Um, we have tried to put up a valiant effort uh, as, as a result of this construction. Hopefully we'll just continue this on, on after construction. Uh, Janelle, if you all have seen the article in The Advocate, comes out weekly. Janelle is the one that is spin 
Yes, and you've done an outstanding job. Oh, yeah. 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 Great job. Uh, that's, that was sorely needed, and it you've is. really done a great so job. That. Again, Better than that. Everything we try to put in there is positive. I write one once a month for the pulse, and so you should see that one in there as well. And then uh, as part of the Sister Bay Bowls, uh, which Mr. Leno was gracious enough to set up so that we could have a radio outlet as well um, on WSBW, right? So Monday mornings. Uh, uh, coffee club. Hopefully, we'll start to get some folks that come in and ask questions. Uh, sort of have a one-on-one -on -one format. Um, the monies that you all authorized me to expend to try to do some promotion of Sister Bay, we tried to, um, in terms of paid media, come up with some things that would be creative. And so, what Janelle has is an audio file of the first radio ad that will begin to go out starting next week. And we'll run through the first week of May. Read it. Do you have it with you? She's going to play it for you. Read it. It's, it's fantastic. Start her over. Across by a pothole, a one way road, or a minor detour. Sister Bay is still alive and well. You will be too. Don't let a little road construction project get in your way. Be thankful that you don't live in the big city where getting around every day is an issue. Getting around Sister Bay may be a little slower, but you will get there safe and sound. Don't forget that the village of Sister Bay is still alive and well. And remember, this ad is longer than the detour. <laughs> Can you play from the beginning again? Sure. Put a microphone close. I'm sure it's Terry Vogel. Yeah. That's how I see the voice of that. Can you grab that mic? Here. That was like Jake Lane. Thank you. You've been on vacation day this year. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? I'm Sheriff Terry Vogel. Death has hardly ever been caused by a pothole, a one-way road, or a minor detour. Sister Bay is still alive and well. You will be too. Don't let a little road construction project get in your way. Be thankful that you don't live in the big city where getting around every day is an issue. Getting around Sister Bay may be a little slower, but you will get there safe and sound. Don't forget that the village of Sister Bay is still alive and well. And remember, this ad is longer than the detour. Yeah. yeah, and it would be funny, be cute, be positive, and that's, that's sort of the outlet that we're going to pursue. And unless uh, you all want me to put it on as a board action, I'm going to get involved in the micromanagement of that. I'm going to continue on that track, as you guys prior authorized me to do. So, do we like that? Do we not like that? Yeah, no, that's good. I like that you got the sheriff in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, it I makes figured. people it makes people pay attention. Yeah. It does. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Motion to adjourn would be in order. I'd like to make that motion to adjourn. Get it. Is there a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good evening. You've got to pay attention. I always do.